you Max. Max. YouTube, what is going on with y'all, man? It's your boy, Max Flames, coming at y'all again with another video today. So, per request from some of you guys, um, in today's video, I will be showing you guys how to properly get a crispy mix within your beats. So, honestly, this has been a video that I've been uh, looking to avoid doing for a little while just because I feel like boomers in the producer community make it seem like mixing is a whole science and that you need to dish out all of these all this money on VST just to get a good mix when honestly none of that is necessary. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. If you're spending more than five minutes on your mix, it's probably gonna come out shitty. Just just being honest with you guys. Um, if you overthink it or you know if you do too much with it, it's gonna come out bad. So I will leave timestamps right here to show you guys how I mix my melodies and how I mix my drums. Um, so yeah, so before we get into it, if you guys haven't already, follow my Instagram and Twitter at MaxFlames underscore. And I'm almost at 2,000 subs. I'm like 300 away. So um, if you guys do enjoy these videos, please do not hesitate to like and subscribe down below. Helps out this channel a lot. So yeah, let's get into it, boys. All right, boys, so jumping right into it. Um, I originally was going to do this video with my headphones, but I decided it'll be better if I show you guys how I mix uh, with my monitors. Um, so yeah, so starting off with the melody, your best friend when mixing melodies is going to be the EQ. So um, for those of you guys who don't know what an EQ is, um, essentially an EQ cuts out all the unwanted frequencies you want in a sound. So a lot of the times with melodies, you'll have low end within that melody. So um, when you pair that low end within the melody with an 808, it clashes really bad. So um, it'll make the mix sound really shitty. It'll sound really like muddy and that's something that you don't want. So um, the first rule with mixing melodies is to always cut out the low end. So um, I'm going to pull up the parametric EQ2 here in uh, FL. And what I'm going to do is go into presets here and then go into the first preset and then just cut out the low end right here. So uh, this sound in particular doesn't really have that much low end as it is, uh, but you still want to cut it out. So um, the next thing that I do after that is I like to level the sound. So this sound, since it's more so like one of the main sounds in the melody, uh, I like to level it down to about negative three decibels. So if you're not really sure how much that is, uh, in the top left corner of FL, it will usually give you the exact amount. So, uh, right there is negative three. So, you can always change this uh, depending on what sound you use. Um, but yeah, so, now that that's leveled, another thing I like to do with my melodies is that I don't like them to be too mono and too dry. So, what I do to make it separate more when you listen to it is i'll either put reverb on it or a stereo imager so um essentially what an imager does is spread out the sound just like the same way a reverb would so if you don't have an imager you can always use uh, a fruity reverb uh, all you could do is just make this bigger and then just raise the wet a little bit it essentially does the same thing so that's good for the first sound um, now on to the second sound so I, that sound is a little bit too like overbearing. So I want to lower it a little bit below the first sound. So I think that's a good level for it. Um, this sound also has hella low end in it. So I'm going to again, pull up this preset here and then just cut out any low end that, that's in it. And then from here, you always want to keep adjusting your levels. This sound right here is more so like a background sound just really to give the beat like a little bit of an ambience to it. So I like to lower this like, I like to really tuck this under the other sound. So, so once I got a good level for it, you can go in here and then you can lower the low end. And then if there's other frequencies, like if you want to make it sound brighter, you can always raise the high end of it. This will bring out more of the high end frequencies. And then you could also 
you could also see where the main frequencies are hitting and then you could also just raise them right there too so and then always don't forget to keep adjusting your levels on how you hear it so um, that's pretty much it for the melody how I mix my melodies um, all of this you know you can get better at it by training your ear and doing it a lot so um, yeah so now moving on to the drums when I mix my drums I do little to nothing as far as putting effects on my drums um, and the reason for that is because you want to pick quality sounds for your drums so the reason why you want to make sure you pick quality sounds is because no amount of post-processing whether you try to EQ the sound compress it or level it none of that will fix a shitty muffled sound so essentially you're dooming yourself from the beginning by picking a bad sound so you always want to make sure you pick quality sounds so yeah so I figured I would re-explain this because the way I explained it in the video was kind of confusing uh, so yeah, back to the video. Um, if you're wondering like good drum kits to get good sounds from anything from like internet money to KBZ, uh, BWB kits, um, even my kits, uh, Tenacious coming soon by the way, are all full of good sounds. So when I mix my drums, I always like to start out with the 808 and the kick. So, so I always like to level out my kick first or my 808 first. And then once the 808 is leveled out, I like to level out the kick according to the 808. So sometimes a kick when it's layered with an 808 kind of sounds like uh, drowned out by the 808. So essentially something you can do to combat that is uh, reversing the polarity of the kick. So this is what it sounds like without the reverse polarity. And then when you reverse it, sounds a lot more crisp and layers well with the 808. So now bringing in the other drums. Uh, with this hi-hat too, I also raise the high end of it a little bit. This, all this really does is just makes the hi-hat sound a lot more crispier. And I did it with the clap also. And then once you're done mixing all your drums, you always want to hear with the melody and then redo the levels uh, according to how they sound with the melody. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about is what I put on the master. So all I put on the master is a soft clipper and a parametric EQ. So the reason why I put a soft clipper and not a fruity limiter on the master is because if you use a limiter, it'll like hard limit the beat. Uh, whereas with a soft clipper, it'll just, like the name says, softly clip the beat. So um, anything like a kick or um, an 808, it'll softly clip it, uh, making sure that, you know, it's not going over the level, but it's still hitting hard. So, um, and then I also put an, a parametric EQ on it and I just raise the high end and a little bit of the mids um, just to give it a little bit more character so now that the beat is fully mixed this is what it sounds like So that's pretty much it. I mean, like I said, it's not something that should take hella long when you mix a beat. Um, it should honestly take like five minutes at the very most. Um, so yeah, so if you guys did learn something from this video, please do not hesitate to like and subscribe down below. Um, it helps out the channel a ton. So yeah, I hope this was able to help you guys. Um, and I hope you guys all have a wonderful day, man. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.